Socrates. Mr. Beast. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. Welcome to my apartment. Okay, I think I finally got everything organized in my apartment like the way I really, really like it. So this will be, you know, one of those classic, annoying uh, YouTube tours of someone's apartment. So right here is kind of, the, I love this door. It's pretty big, as you can see. Well, it makes me look short. I am, you know, I'm average height. Okay, I'm average, according to American society of something. 5'10 is average, okay. Uh, but then I have a nice mirror here. Uh, and then I have three pictures and another picture here. But I love these photos. These are photos um, that I took uh, when I was in Croatia. I did this awesome like visit to Croatia. And then the bottom picture is a picture of my now dead dog. Very, very sad. And then over here is just something my dad got me. And it's kind of this picture that's cool because it's nighttime and daytime. But let's move on to the kitchen and the island. The first thing is this awesome island. It's just this huge middle kind of piece of slab of thing. It's one of the reasons I first bought this apartment actually was just because it's just such a nice, huge piece of stuff to cook on and chop things and put lay out all my shit. It's actually really, really nice and clean right now. Normally I just put everything on here, uh, but I cleaned it up for you. Then if we come over here, this is kind of where I spend most of the time again, cleaned up nicely for you guys. Uh, but I make coffee in the morning. Recently I've been trying out some cold brew stuff, but normally I always go to this Chemex. Uh, I bought a scale off of Amazon. I think this is $10 uh, just cause you know, I like to be fancy and weigh out my grams. And then I have this Virtuoso grinder, uh, which is really cool. And I have this Vava kettle, which I use all the time. And then I put my beans in this little thing just to make me look even fancier. And then over here, I just put all my little things, spatulas, spoons, whatever in here. Toaster in here, which I barely use. You don't really toast that many things, I find. I don't know, is anyone a big toaster? Uh, this is a small toaster. <laughs> okay. Uh, cookbooks, there's only really three cookbooks that I really like. The Wagamama cookbook right here is awesome. Uh, this is the best cookbook, the complete cooking book for two. It's like the only cookbook except I'm cooking for one. Hello darkness, my old friend. But, but the only really good thing about it is like literally everything I've made in here has been good. There's been no, nothing in here that's been bad and it's really easy. Uh, and then to make myself look a little bit fancy, I bought this, the, you know, the classic cookbook of all time. Haven't made a single thing from that yet. So moving on, we have a cupboard here and this is, I just put lots of random nicks and necks. I put all my jackets, little tote bags. I have this nice picture over here, uh, which my brother actually got me. And this is a picture of Broad Street, Philly in 1905, which is pretty cool. And here I have something which I am very, very proud of. I got this anchor multi-port kind of contraption here. And what it does is it has three uh, slots are in it, a USB regular, two USB C's, uh, and it goes, I think 40 Watts, some, some crazy wattage. So it charges everything really fast. I looped it together with this kind of cable controller cord. And then I loop it again together up here on another cable controller cord. That way all the cables aren't on the ground. And whenever I need to charge anything, I just take one of these three cables and plug it in up here. I'm so proud of it. I think this thing is super cool. And then as soon as I say that, obviously it falls off, which is great. Okay, but now we can get onto the cooler part. Uh, there is a secret room here, which I will not talk about because I'll be talking about this room soon. Maybe I'll let you guys peek. Wait, I'll let you guys peek in here. What is in here? Hmm, what could that be? Okay, that's it. No more, no more. So onto a more fun part of the room here. Uh, this is kind of the behind living area. Uh, I have this Martin guitar, which I love. I got this like six years ago and I really just liked it because I couldn't find many guitars with this nice dark brown color. And then I have the bar card over here, but I don't really drink. So, um, you know, these are just like for friends, I guess, but I don't really have any friends. But yeah, so these, I just got this fancy decanter. I think it's really nice. Pour some whiskey in there, two cool little scotch glasses, put them here. I think they've been used, actually they're kind of getting dusty because I drink, I really don't drink at all. Plants, I like plants a lot. Uh, so this is a snake plant here. This is the longest living plant in the apartment. They're really e easy to take care of. I water it like once a month and then I just let it be. Uh, I have this cool, oh Jesus Christ. If I do drink, I really like to drink wine. So I have this cool like holder. I think again on Amazon, uh, favorite is Chianti wine. Put this down back here. 
And then this is my desk. Uh, I have an entire other video kind of on my desk tour. So like on a tour of my desk, you can watch that video elsewhere if you want to see the video. But again, I really love this desk because it can go up to kind of lots of different levels. I do, so the first level I do uh, is kind of just sitting down and the second level, which is going up to you right now is regular standing. And the third level going up to it, the third level I go up to is I have this like balance board which I stand on, so that's the third level. And then the fourth level is just the highest it can go that way because I, you see all this really crappy junk behind me. Sometimes I need to water the plants or play with my tech gear, so I'll just literally, look, I can take my, I can take my desk and put this under here. I really hope this doesn't fall. So let's move on to the living room area. First, I have this cool kind of tall lamp and this tall lamp, again, I think it's from CB2. It can go up and down. Uh, it's just kind of nice. And I put in all these lamps. I put in the special Sengled colored LED bulbs because I can tell it what to do, which I think are really, really cool. So I connect everything through uh, like Amazon Alexa and I have like various Alexas around my apartment. So if I just wanted this to like go orange or something like that, or what's a good color you can see? Let's say like blue. So I say Alexa living lamp blue. Isn't that cool? I think that's super cool. Okay, Alexa, living lamp, white. And then like before bedtime, what I like to do is I have like a certain setting on my Alexa, so I have routines, so I can just be like, Alexa, it's nighttime. See all the lights go off here, this light comes on. Uh, and then when I say, Alexa, good night. Should go off, it went off, isn't that cool? Uh, and then, cause usually when I wake up in the morning, I want all the lights to be fully bright on. I talk about this in other videos, but basically you want as many overhead lights on as possible when you first wake up in the morning, cause this, you know, signals to your, signals to your retina with the light, it's morning time. So I'll just be Alexa, full power. And she compliments me too, cool. Um, so yeah, that's the lights. I have those special lights in, and every, every, all the lights here are that. So all the lights here are those special fancy lights. Uh, these lights I don't have like that because I, I didn't want to do it like that. Uh, and then for, again, obviously this lamp right here, I have that special light in. And then in my bedroom over there, in my bedroom over there, I have the special lights. This is probably the background you guys are most familiar with. This is kind of my living, main living area. Uh, let's start with this table. This table is awesome, and this is honestly where I eat usually, which is probably bad, you know, to eat and watch TV, but look at that. Did you see that? Look very closely, because you might have missed it. You see that? Wait, I'll do it one more time, wait. Isn't that cool? But usually, you know, I'll have my stuff up here, eat, um, watch TV. That's it. And again, this is, I think this is from uh, Crate and Barrel 2. This couch is from Ikea. Uh, these pillows are from Crate and Barrel too. Uh, the bar cart is from Amazon. The guitar is Martin Guitar. Then for the TV setup, obviously you have the couch and then you have the TV. Um, so the TV setup, I have this cool chess board thing. This is CB2, again, Crate and Barrel 2. I have the Fluence uh, record player here. Uh, and this is really cool because I'll tell you kind of how it all plugs in and it connects everything. I think I just got a 47 inch uh, TV, whatever the best 4K, whatever one was on Amazon at the time, like four or five years ago. And then under here, I have, I have the Yamaha AV receiver RX V383. Uh, and this is really good because it connects all my things together. Like I have the AV receiver here. It can connect to Bluetooth if I want to play music throughout my apartment. Um, and I also have uh, it connected to an Xbox in this other drawer down here. But how do these all play it? So how do I play it? I have a really good speaker setup. So down here, I've got these Klipsch speakers. So I have the main speaker down here, and then to the right here, I have the other one connected to my router. And then I have another Klipsch speaker kind of hidden down there. And then behind me, what I do, because I have the surround sound speakers, is right there is one speaker, and right there is one speaker. And what you need to do is you need to have an AV 5.1 receiver or something like that. That way, when everything plays out of here, uh, it'll play through the two side speakers, the speaker under that, and the two speakers behind me. And you also need to do some copper wiring and all this stuff for AV receivers, but the sound is like so much better. Uh, but yeah, fancy chess set. I picked out the books that uh, make me look the smartest here and put them right here. I've been trying to read like more about like Stoic stuff, I guess. So I have the Seneca Letters from Stoic, uh, Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, and The Guide to the Good Life by William B. Irvine. Irvine. And now let's get on to my favorite part of the apartment. This is the newest edition of the apartment. And this is my little kind of reading nook. 
right here. Uh, and this reading nook is awesome, but I had to wait to make this video just because you see this cushion right here. So they don't make cushions like this because it's got to go into the window and all these weird little things. So I had to get this cushion custom made, but it's, it's really great. It's finally really comfy. So let's talk about all the books down here. So really, I just bought a bunch of books. I decided to buy like 100 books. Um, I went through, I think, nine or 10 of the 100 books to read in a lifetime, and I kind of cross-referenced each one and tried to figure out which books appear the most. Uh, and kind of, this is these are all the books I did. So the, on the left side, we have fiction books. On the right side, we have non-fiction books. So t I mean, I'll just start going through the names. Midnight's Garden, The Road, Slaughterhouse Five, Alice in Wonderland, Walden, The Stranger, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, Anna Karina, Fahrenheit 451, Pride and Prejudice, The Brothers Kazimov, uh, Edgar Allan Poe, The Giver, The Phantom Tollbooth, Catch-22, The Upanishads, uh, The Canterbury Tales, Hunger Games, Let's Go, The White Ones, Moby Dick, uh, The Bro Brothers Grimm, Don Quixote, The Castle, Iliad and Odyssey, Flash Boys, The Trial, Where the Wild Things Are. And then on the right side, we have the nonfiction books. So we have uh, The Almanac, uh, which is Charlie Munger's Almanac, The Wealth of Nations, Leonardo da Vinci's uh, biography by Walter Isaacson, uh, The Ride of a Lifetime, The Bitcoin Standard, Basic Economics, The Magic of Thinking Big, Storyworthy, The Autobiography of Benjamin Franklin, uh, The Art of War, The Intelligent Investment, A Random Walk Down Wall Street, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, Tax-Free Wealth, Psychology of Money, The Interpretation of Dreams, The Millionaire Next Door, Think and Grow Rich, The Origin of Species. But again, I've mentioned it in other videos and I kind of make sure I like to take advantage of classical conditioning. So when I'm up here, I'm only reading because, you know, reading is still a habit that I'm trying to build slowly uh, and I'll always read kind of 30 minutes before I go to bed. Uh, and I'll always read it up here. One, because I don't want to read in my bed because again, when you're in your bed, you really should only be sleeping. So that way you condition yourself to, when you're in your bed to sleep. Uh, and the other reason is it's such a nice spot up here that sometimes I like to bring my phone and read up here or just like take my little iPad and watch videos on it. Uh, but I don't want to do that because this should be, again, just a reading spot, but it's an awesome, an awesome spot. But yeah, going back to, so there's a spot kind of for everything, right? Which is why I really like my apartment. This is kind of the image you're probably used to seeing from my videos. Uh, but like when I like watch TV, chill out, eat, I'm sitting right here. Uh, when I'm doing any kind of work, I'm sitting at my desk. Uh, when I do actually medical school work, I sit up on the counter up here just because I, I like to separate kind of where I do YouTube work and other kind of work versus where I do medical school work. And then when I read, I make sure I read over here. And then when I sleep, I sleep in the bedroom. And now we're going on to the bedroom. So welcome to the bedroom. I have this Filson blanket on the right. I have some dumb pillow that I never use and I don't know why I put it there because it's really annoying to put away every time I, I have it. Get out of here. I also really like Ansel Adams. Like I was into photography a little bit before I got into videography. So I have a couple of these kind of Ansel Adams photos. Uh, this one is the San Francisco Bridge before it was the San Francisco Bridge. So like right where the bridge was. And then over here you have a little forest. Um, these are my scrubs. I only wear kind of dark gray or the light blue scrubs, so I just always keep them there, ready to go. Uh, nicely, nice, thankfully, uh, I think I'm going to do internal medicine, but in, in all the hospitals now, you don't really have to wear fancy clothes unless you're doing outpatient stuff, so usually I just wear uh, scrubs. Uh, and then up here, kind of where the bed is. This is one of my favorite pictures. I think it's my favorite picture I ever took. Uh, it's of my grandpa. He's unfortunately passed away now, um, but I think it's a really, really good picture. I have a, pl I have a lamp here, which again is controlled by the Alexa, Alexa lamp bulbs. Uh, above it, is this is another Ansel Adams photo. This is probably his most famous one. It's like the wind in the river. I think it's really cool because this is one of the first times where I realized, oh wait, you can like edit photos like after the fact because he was really good at kind of making the brighter parts brighter and the darker darks darker or emphasizing certain parts. Um, so I thought that was really cool. And this was back in the day, of course, he didn't have Lightroom, so he couldn't make the adjustments without Lightroom, so I always thought that was really awesome. Um, reading right now The Count of Monte Cristo, it sounds like a fancy book, but really it's just like a really fun book to read. It's really, really good. Uh, don't be scared by the 1,200 pages. Um, it's just like a fun book to read. The people say you should even read it as a teenager because it's just such a, such a fun book. Uh, I also down here have the exploring the world of lucid dreaming because I'm into lucid dreaming still uh, and I like to kind of read this occasionally or reread this occasionally when I want to get in the zone. Going on to the bathroom. How exciting is this? Can you believe we're in the bathroom? 
The only cool thing I like the, are these lights. These were again made by the woodworking guy. Uh, and you just take like the, you can build this actually on the inter internet. You can figure out how to build this. You just take a piece of wood, you color it a different color, uh, and you drill in. These are like recycled pipes. Uh, and then you can get an electrician to wire stuff through here. And then you just screw in kind of these nice uh, filament like LED bulbs. These are called like Benjamin Franklin bulbs, I think, or something like that. They're just like more old fashioned bulbs here. But that is it, that's my apartment tour. So again, I have like the main living area. Uh, I, it was two bedrooms and two bathrooms, uh, but I turned the bedroom and bathroom over there into something special, which you will be seeing soon. Uh, the reading nook is awesome. Again, it's so, it's like my favorite thing in this apartment. But yeah, that's my apartment. And I think the setup is pretty, pretty awesome right now. But I kind of want to read and see a little bit more books that are I can fit in that reading nook. Like I can only fit a certain amount of books in that reading nook. but. I wanted to be able to check out, you know, thousands and thousands of books. And there's this really cool app that lets me get the gist, lets me get a summary of kind of pretty much tons and thousands of books out there. And that application is Shortform. And Shortform has changed the game for me when it comes to books. This video is sponsored by Shortform. When I don't have a book on my shelf or I just want to get a better general sense of a book, the first place I go to is short form. Initially, when I was looking on the internet for just summaries of books that I wanted to get a general gist of, I found this short form website and the short form application, which had exactly what I needed, right? It had the one page perfect summary. But the reason I actually decided to pay money for short form and the reason I actually was using short form before they reached out to me to advertise for one on one of my videos was because of the next part of the short form summary, which isn't the one page part, but it's like the most detailed and most awesome summary you'll ever find on the internet. Whenever I finish reading a book, I usually go to Shortform and download the PDF summary from Shortform and put that PDF summary of Shortform onto like my Notion major repository of all my book notes and like all my life notes ever. So if you want to check out Shortform completely for free for five days and get 20% off an annual subscription, head to my special link, which is just shortform.com slash Zach with an H to level up your reading habit. Like seriously, level it up. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining me on this apartment tour. And I will see you on the next one. Ah, yes. Latin. Latin. Mm, Socrates. Ah, yes. Great.